And we are live. What's up? And the reason for the live broadcast is to give you guys some updates on how things are going, what's going on, and what we're looking at uh, getting into here shortly. And we are coming at you live from the studios of Is Your Six Covered. So he's got this nice setup here. The light's actually good. It looks like I have this tan and everything else. <laughs> so uh, we've got three people in here. What we'll do is uh, we'll get started here in just a second. But um, basically, uh, what I wanted to do was just type, just kind of go over this whole process of how long it's taken and how long it's taken to develop this this bag to get this this company going okay so what's up steve headley abigail sabotage what's up gentlemen and ladies so we got 15 in here one thumbs up 21 in here all right guys so um this is a little update about the bullet and data management folder so Let's talk about the concept. What's up, Darren and Brian T? I hope you guys can hear me well, and I hope we actually have decent service. What's up, Mr. Kreiderman? So basically, you know, you guys have been shooting a long time. What's up, Eric and Mac at Papa's Place? And when I went out to Utah, and I've done a lot of different types of shooting. So it's, you know, whether it's USPSA, whether it's three gun, whether it's uh, ruck matches, whether it's a PRS match, sniper match, small bore, what's up aggressor. Uh, one of the things, and maybe I'm going to go ahead and tell them myself. Uh, let's see, Jepkes, what's up? I'm not the most organized person at a match, okay? So at a match, when, you, when I get into that mindset, if you go to my vehicle or anything like that, what's up, Mono? What is up? Assurance Arms. Assurance Arms. Guys, he's out in Mills River, North Carolina. If you've ever been to a shop, a little small shop, really uh, uh, really good folks to deal with. And his name's uh, Scott. I mean, just awesome dude. Looking dapper. No, this is this is the, uh, the, fl the flannel look, right? So anyway, and I got a haircut. So basically, if you ever go to my truck, it looks like a bomb went off in there, right? Especially during a match. And the problem is, is... You get so wrapped up on some of these stages that your stuff just ends up going everywhere. So when Rick and I went out to the Hornady PRC out in Utah, rent a rental, ve rental vehicle, we have all of this stuff, and I'm trying to keep all my stuff organized. So when I came back, I said, look, I'm tired of dealing with this moon dust and my organizational skills, okay? So when I came back, uh, I'm going to show you guys, like, start to finish how this all happened. Uh, when I came back, I actually, and I'm not a seamstress, don't know anything about it, but I, I came up with this, and this is a little piece of felt, and I cut this out with a pair of scissors, and I know it's kind of washed out because of the light, but I had this idea of a concept, okay? Something that could hold my data, something that could hold my Kestrel, my bullets, and shooting PRS was a little different than what I was used to, okay? What I was used to before was having my mags ready, you know, having them loaded up, but you don't see that in PRS. What you see are a lot of like the Coltac, the ammo novel, where it holds 120 bullets in there, or like the Walsh Custom Defense. And so I started working on this idea, and this is, this is how it started, guys. And so what we did was we figured, hey, you know what? Let's go from paper to something that's really, really bad. And I want you guys to look at this, but this is how an idea starts, okay? So I know nothing about sewing, and with the help of Sam and some other friends, what we did is we kind of took that concept. If you make a hunting bag, I'll definitely buy one or two. I appreciate that. And we took some really just, honestly, this was stick-on Velcro because we didn't know. No, we're not, Mr. Crowden. We're over at Rick's. And we kind of came up with an idea, and it was like, you know what? This is actually decent. This, this would actually work for something. You can see where we had some pen holders and everything else in here. And I knew I wanted molly on it, so we did a bunch of molly on the back. But it still wasn't there. Um, the handle was just horrible. I said, man, I don't like this. And I started thinking about, what's up, Richard? Uh, what I started thinking about, Chubal said, yeah, it's, I could have information on that coming was what if I started a company and after shooting competitive, competitively for honestly guys for almost 30 years now, um, I knew it was lacking in the industry with regards to new and innovative things. There's a lot of really, really cool things out there, but it's stuff that you're having to make work, okay? It's not stuff that's designed to work. Hey, Rick, is that one of your like ammo bags? 
Yeah. Okay. So, and what, what I mean, case in point, is we're always having to go last minute and go to a store or grab something that looks like an ammo, it's like a hunting bag that's got multicam, and we're just throwing stuff in it. I said, well, what if we what if we build something? What if we start engineering stuff that number one was made in the USA, make it locally? Yeah, it's going to cost a little bit more, but it's it's not funding money overseas. Okay, we're, we're doing it here. We're proud of it. We're proud Americans, and um, you just killed the light. That's all right. And anyway, that was the idea. So we went. We kept moving forward with the concept, and so this was the third like rendering of it, if you will. We went from paper to that really, really bad thing to, to some of these buckles. And I said, you know what? This has potential. And you guys can see, I mean, this stuff wasn't even sewn right. We had some D-rings on the side. What's up, Jerry Parker? Jerry Parker. And Hyder Yoda. I'm right here, guys. <laughs> Everybody's yeah, here. Rick's over there. They, they, they and I was like, you know, curtain. we can do a mat pocket and we can do some bullet holders. And that seemed like it was going to work pretty well. So we kept working with the concept. We actually formed an LLC. We started a company. We started talking to attorneys uh, about getting the patents pending on this. And it was a chore, guys. Uh, we started this project, I guess, about two and a half months ago. And, you know, my background is industrial manufacturing technology. I know nothing about soft goods, okay, at all. <laughs> and... I really didn't know what I was getting into. I knew it was going to cost some money. It was going to take a lot of time and effort. And that's where I've been. That's what I've been doing. And I reached out to somebody. Uh, we're getting into that, Abigail. We will get into price points and all that in just a minute. I actually have... Damn it, Abigail. Slow down. Yeah. So, so we actually had a friend. So I reached out to someone that is a firefighter, not Rick, uh, but it was a firefighter that I had known, I'd done some shooting with. And he's like, yeah, he goes, I'll, uh, I'll see what I can do. And... He actually did an outstanding job. For somebody like me that has no experience with soft goods, uh, it took him about two weeks or so. He did it at home, and this is what he came up with. And you can see we had the little hand stitch molly here. We had the Velcro, and we, we said, we'll just throw some cuties up on the top here. And I started looking at it, and I said, you know, we can do more with that. And we put molly on the back. What's up, Jerry? Here's the comments. Real close. Yeah, that's good. I won't need my glasses. And he did an unbelievable job with the stitching. And this enabled us to actually approach a company. And I reached out to a lot of companies. And what you're going to realize is when you're trying to get a company like this started is a lot of people don't want to talk to you, okay? Uh, they, they don't have the time to deal with you for the most part uh, because, you know, you're a new startup company. You haven't been in business for a while. You know nothing about soft goods. And they want to know, oh, are you going to do 2,000 of these or 10,000 of these? And I knew that wasn't going to be possible. So uh, through the Lord's grace, we were actually able to find a local company that actually does stuff for the military. Okay, at this point, I'm going to leave them unnamed. But no, we have capital. That's the thing. We had the money. And so, yeah, having a patent helps a ton, Brian, that's for sure. So this is the thing. We had the capital because we put our money together. We had saved up, and we're not talking about a couple thousand dollars. You, ha you have to have quite a bit of money to be able to get into a venture like this. By the time you look at a design patent, which is about $3,000, and to maintain a utility patent, you're looking at about $11,000 to maintain it. We're talking about over the course of it. And what you need to realize is that when you get a patent... It's, and this is the way it was explained by the attorney. It is no different than putting a no trespassing sign in your yard. And if someone trespasses into your yard, that doesn't give you the right to uh, inflict bodily injury on them, okay? Basically, it is a warning sign, okay? And I know some of you might say, well, somebody come into my yard, no trespassing, I'm going to shoot them. You can't do that. You know that, right? You're not in fear for your life, all right? So the whole idea behind a patent is just a warning. Now, if somebody does copy this, now I've got to have the funds in the capital by looking at the sheet behind you. Black Tuesday sale. Now, Tuesday. Um, it, it also means you have to pursue them legally. You can give them a cease and desist, but it only gives you a limited amount of protection. And we wanted to do this in, in, the, in the right way. 
So with this, we were able to take it to a company that does stuff for the Army and for the Navy. And the very first thing was, number one, has to be made in the USA, every single piece, part, and component, and it has to be Barry compliant. That's pretty much one of the things to have Barry compliance. If you guys aren't aware of that, what that means is, is anything that goes to the military has to meet Barry compliance. And that means it's being sourced uh, with USA materials. You have to have your documents showing where it was sourced from, making sure you're not getting Chinese stuff or anything else. So I'm getting ready to show you. Here we go. I got 94 people on here. And I do want honest feedback, okay? This is pretty much the final prototype. And I know you guys say, man, you went through a bunch of prototypes. I wanted it to be right, okay? This right here is the bullet and data management folder. This is the bad MF. So what you're going to see is you have a handle here that actually has uh, rope on the inside, so it will fit a large person's hand pretty well, okay? I have pretty large palms, and I, I hate a bag that doesn't fit just right. On the top here, we did utilize um, a material that they use in the military. It's called Tegris. They use it in a lot of aviation seats and everything else. And then you have these QDs here. Now, let's break away for a minute. Those QDs are not something that you pull off of your weapon and put it on there, okay? I actually laid this out. This is actually part of what we did. And I'll show you these engineer drawings. These are our own patented designs for QDs that are made to go into fabric, okay? They have backer plates and everything else. It really won't matter that I'm showing you, but basically going from concept to actually building it because the problem with like a true M-lock or a key mod is you're gonna have a standoff here, okay? because of where it locks into the key mod rail. So we actually laid these out, had all of these manufactured within 10 minutes from the house here in Western North Carolina. We actually took them, I actually drove for two hours and had them, had all the parts. Damn the Cobra buckle shoot. Black oxided, okay? So all of these were fresh off. We had 400 and something of these made because each one of these bags is gonna take a minimum of two. This is a Cobra one inch buckle. You might say, wait a minute, that's made by Austria Alpine, which is an Austrian company. These are very compliant because they have a USA facility or they have a North American facility. And if you look at it initially, you might say, well, it looks like it's upside down and it is, but that's for a reason. That's so when you reach up here and you press this, it unlocks for you. So I did put the male part here and the female part here. These are laser cut molly, and they are functional, okay? It's not just aesthetics. I'm gonna show you how all this stuff works in just a minute. On the back side, you know, you can use like malice clips or anything like this, and, and I'll show you how all this works. But basically, it is a bag that can hold my data cards, it can hold my Kestrel, it can hold uh, layout cards, sector drawings. Um, it pretty much has everything I need in order to shoot a stage. I actually took this one and used it at the Sniper's Unknown. And I did have a lot of people ask me, where did you get that? And I said, it's mine and it, it's coming soon. It's mine. <laughs> well, it's my design. Yeah. It's mine. It, it is mine. Yeah. <laughs> so It's mine. So what we're going to do is let's go over everything first. Uh, I will tell you these I'm being told, are going to be available before Christmas, okay? Um, the price point will be $200 for this model, okay? It can go up from there, but I'll tell you what all is included, and when you see all what it does, you'll understand how much goes into this, and we'll get into to why those costs cost so much, or why the cost is what it is. So what you see here, guys, this isn't cardboard. This is that Tegris fabric, okay? The Tegris is, is not really a fabric. What it is, it's a carbon fiber type material. And I'm not trying to sell this to you. I'm just trying to tell you about the product. Let me see. I need... Oh, the back of the whiteboard? Yeah. That's on this one. Right. Hold on for just a second. We're grabbing one of the materials here. Yeah. And so for those of you that might have seen it, this is actually a piece of Tegris, okay? It's sourced out of Millican in South Carolina. And if you deal with any Cry products or AXL, you've seen this before, okay? 
No, Scribble, I'm not gonna take anyone's money until I have these built. These actually go into production, I think, next week. Uh, but this is the back of one of the data boards here, okay? And that is a piece of vinyl, so you can use a wet erase, dry erase on this, and we'll get into that in just a minute. Does it come in black? No, it is not going to come in black. Pre-orders. The in only two colors you're gonna be able to get this in is Coyote and Multicam, and it is all mil-spec material even the Velcro, every single piece, part, and component on here. So when you lift this up, this is gonna be your top panel. This right here is the bottom panel that has the hook on it. And when you open it up, you're gonna have two flaps that open up. It doesn't matter if you're left-handed or right-handed because either one of them will, I'm trying to do this upside down, sorry, will lock in on itself. So you saw how I just wrapped it that way. We can go this way and do it that way as well. Okay, so it doesn't matter if you're left-handed or right-handed or which way you open it, that's how it's gonna work. You also know we did away with the elastic material here and we put a gusset here on this side. This is going to give it the ability to expand without having too much on the sides. So you've got one panel that drops down, one panel that lifts up like this, and you have storage pockets within this. So you can configure it a multitude of different ways. Uh, I'm going to get more on, into the design here in just a second. Cool boy, you should have grabbed it before you uh, snuck up to somebody. So one of the things I noticed is when I put this in a backpack and it dropped down and it had 120 rounds in it with everything else, I didn't have enough strength to grab this out of the bottom of my pack. So what I added was a low profile grab handle. And this right here enables you to grab it, pull it out of the pack from either direction. So either way that you put this in a pack, you're gonna be able to get it out of there. If this is something that you don't like, you can simply snip it off right here and be done with it. I would recommend keeping it on because your backpacks are typically gonna be more narrow than they are wide. And if you slide it in there, it's easier to pull it out. Say Miguel, yeah, you can conceal it with your Glock. So the bullet holders, and what it will come with is it will come with a bullet data management folder and eight runners, okay? These runners look like this. These are 308 cartridges. It's based off of a 6.5 Creedmoor or 308 parent cartridges, but we have bullet tip protectors. These are Velcro. You can place them wherever you want. It will expand. It'll hold 223. So it will hold 120 rounds without <laughs> any issues. Ramsey Country wants to buy two. Okay, so uh, if you can help me out here for just a second, Rick. I'm always okay. helping you out, buddy. I appreciate that. If you could back that camera up a little bit, I want to show them on the table back how this it works. Up. Back yeah. it up. Back it up. It slices. You want it down here? It's going to be, yeah. So guys, uh, just, just bear with me for just a minute. Typically, <clears> when you go to a match, whether or not you're shooting a PRS match or a ruck style match, any type of long gun match, even a rim fire style, like I say, an NRL 22 match, which we're actually shooting this weekend, yeah. I'll have this pack with me. So you're gonna have all of your gear on. The way I've designed it is you can either have it in it or you can have it mounted to your pack. Now I'm a huge fan of Mystery Ranch backpacks. So this is a Mystery Ranch. What do you see on the back? You're going to see that bullet and data management folder. A bad MS. So what you do is when you get to the stage, you're going to take your gear and you're going to lay it down. Now, from here, I want you to think about this, guys. I open it up. It doesn't matter if it's in the sand or anything else. Guess what I've got? I've got everything. I've got my bullets. I've got my data cards here. Inside, I can have my marking pens. Kestrel, everything is going to be located in here. The Kestrel pouch I've already designed, whether you want to stick it on the inside or what I'm going to recommend, the way we've designed this is you can put it on the outside here and your Kestrel is going to stay. You can take the tether on your Kestrel because none of us want to lose our Kestrels. And what you can do is take a QD like off of the top and just run, I don't know if they can see that, they should be able they to. They can, they can see So what you can do is have this in the pouch, and remember, this is lined with Tegris as well, and then what you can do is basically run, I don't know if they can see all of that. You can run that into the top, this or you can place your sling into the top if you don't want it in here. There you go. So now, even if your pouch becomes undone, you're not gonna lose your Kestrel. Most important part is gonna be that Kestrel. 
That's yeah. that's a lifesaver. You got to have this. But show them the Tetris inside of there that protects the screen. I will. Uh, hold on just a second. All right, let's go up for just a second. All right, guys, so now you can see this layout and how it works. I know it's still missing the beer can holder. You're going to say, why is there no buckle on this? And that's because we are waiting on a shipment of 162 Cobra buckles, which will be here this week. So what we did is we stole it off of this prototype to actually go on the final model, but this will have the buckle onto this. Now, let's say you're a gas gunner guy. I've got pouches that are going to go on the inside, but you can still run. This is a G-code setup. You can run it straight through the molly, and that way you can put your AR pouches on the outside on either side. And you might say, well, how about this? And this is, let's turn it down just a little bit. Make up your ding, man. A little bit more. They got to be able to see these. All right, so guys, on this model right here, you're going to see two more QDs. Either you love it or you hate it, okay? I love it. Mine are going to have these on here, but that will be an additional cost. There's going to be a 2QD model and a 4QD model. What this is for is if you needed to attach a shooting bag or if you needed to attach another shooting bag, you've got a way to connect it. I can't add the two extra ones in. Let's go back up if we can. I can't add the two extra ones in at the same cost just because of what it's costing us. We're making almost nothing off of this, but we have enough to stay afloat if we go with it and we just go with the two. So the initial order, we're going to have 60 done before Christmas, and they will be just like these that you see here, but we will have some. We're going to have the SKU number is going to be like bad MF2 or bad MF4. Two means you're getting the QDs, the two QDs, and the four means you'll get the four with the two on the front. But that's going to be a slide up charge. That's going to be around 220-ish, and it'll come with eight of these. So it's not just that. We'll also have the data panels like this. This has the Tegris. It does have the Velcro, and this can just slap straight onto to your tripod. We're going to have rimfire inserts. We'll have pistol inserts, magazine inserts. We'll have AR magazine inserts. Those have already been done. Those have already been proofed out. They're good to go. How are those QDs attached to the carrier stitching? There's backing. Behind. Okay, so these QDs actually have a bearing plate on the back of it, a solid piece of steel that's actually bigger than the QD itself. And because it's through the Tegris, you're not going to be able to pull it out. Um, I actually tested our buckles on myself, and Sam actually lifted my weight completely off the floor. That's 180 pounds. What a lot of you guys don't realize, or you might know, is a QD, a true mil spec QD, will hold about 275 pounds. So trust me, it will definitely hold whatever you're going to put on here, as long as you're being realistic uh, with your whatever type of malice clips you're using on the back. If you use a polymer, you know that's not going to hold 200 plus pounds. So yeah, I'm trying to get this out before Christmas, but guys, there's a whole lot more coming. Um, this is one facet of things that we're adding to the company. Um, give me just a second. I'm going to let you guys be privy to something that no one else has seen before. Um, give me just a second. He's going to show you guys something top secret. Military will lift these up. I hope so. This is also why we did everything to be very compliant. Um, you know, that was one of the things... Uh, the name of the company is actually X-Ring Customs LLC, and so we're actually using the mil the military labels here, and so you'll see X-Ring Customs, made in the USA, the SKU is the bad MF, and on the bottom right there it says very compliant, which it is 100%. So I'm going to show you guys something else I've been working on. I know I've been missing in action for quite a while. Um, data card holders. If you haven't gotten into precision rifle shooting or long range shooting, you'll soon learn. It'll take the military 10 years, yeah, at least to adopt it, right? You'll soon learn that you're going to have to have a data card holder, okay? Using something on your arm can work, but it's being able to see it and being able to get on the gun. You're coming back off the gun or you're looking back at your wrist to be able to see this data. Doesn't work as There's well. really only a handful of companies, I think, that make really, really good data card holders. One you guys probably know about. Big kudos to them. Um, and actually, Abigail, that's actually not true. Uh, military trials, I've actually been subjected to some of those with the product that I made. 
and I have a couple patents on those. Um, we got that through in nine months. Went through nine months from trials to procurement, and so it can happen faster if they want it, depending on the group. So, data card holder. Um, I don't have, yes, exactly, DW. Uh, this has a lot of different applications. Uh, it doesn't have to hold bullets. It can hold a lot of other things, computers, uh, laptops, iPads, things like that. Brian T, the website's not up yet. No, I have not got it up yet because we've still got to upload photos and everything else. Red Hawk is nice card holder, but not cheap. Okay, so he's, I think he said Red Hawk, but I think he means Hawk Hill. Uh, Hawk Hill comes to mind. It's one of the best data card holders that I've ever used or seen. It is something that is high quality that I'm actually proud to put on my gun or rifle uh, because these, this game is not cheap, guys. I mean, you don't see many people out there with a... Look, I'm not knocking on anybody's thing, but if you're doing PRS or if you're doing you know, sniper style matches, you're not out there with a $200 rifle with a $300 scope. It's just not the way it is. So I'm that guy that I don't like 3D printed, okay? Uh, 3D printed is weak, typically. It breaks, I already had that happen. It happened last week on us. Uh, split right it? down the ring. Uh, was I, I was actually gonna use it in the match this weekend. I'm like, well, here's $30 going down the drain or $40. True. So I wanted something that was along that upper end line. Um, so for you guys that kind of appreciate this, you know, having a nice data card, you'll, you'll understand what this is about. The problem that I found with the Hawk Hill is I don't have real estate on all of my rifles. A lot of your ARs are going to have Picatinny's here and, you know, all the stuff everywhere. And you can put a, you can put a Hawk Hill Picatinny mount about anywhere. But when you get into these precision long guns, especially one that's custom built, like let's say Rick's. Yeah, there's you know, no real estate. Th there's no real estate. What you've got is a little pick rail, you know, probably a 20 minute of angle base. And you know, if you've got a spur, forget about it. Unless you put a pick rail up on top, it's another 40 bucks, which a spur is $400. Everything's expensive. Everything's expensive. But the problem is, is you really have no place to put it on some of these precision long guns, okay? So what I came up with was a QD system, and I'm gonna show you this for just a minute because this is still concept proof. This is being made. Uh, calls have already been made to attorney, I'm okay. Uh, but basically, what if you had a data card built as good as, or if not better than let's say a Hawk Hill for less money, but you could easily move it from one rifle to another. Go from your precision rifle to your AR like real to easy. whatever, okay? Like a click of a button easy. So what I've designed, I'm gonna show you this for just a minute. What I've designed is a QD released data card holder. Okay, so the center button there, you press it, you can take it off of a QD and go to another thing. You're like, wait a minute, wait a minute. What if my rifle doesn't have a QD? I've already designed a scope tube ring that goes around 34 millimeter and 30 millimeter tubes. I'm not doing a 35. I might look at that later, but basically it'll just go around. It is machined aluminum and the QD just goes into the side of that. So if you have something with no real estate, you can attack, yeah, I appreciate that San Miguel you can attach it to your scope. There's also an attachment that you can go to a pick rail, but if your rifle already has M locks or it has a QD that is non-rotating, you can use that existing hole. So guys, there is a difference. I want you guys to know some of you might or might not be aware of this, but if you take your QD and you place it into, let's say this one, like one of our bags, you see how that spins endlessly? That data card holder won't work on that. But you find one like this that has ball detents in it. And what it will do is it will lock out on 45 degree angles. Okay, I'm going to do this up close. So you see how that has that rotation? What I've done is I've designed one of these that will move just enough so you can keep it vertical. You can remove it. You can still swing it down. But what we can do is rotate 180 degrees so you can run two data cards on one data card holder. One on the front, one on the back. So you've got full face here. Okay, we're going to pretend this is data card. Pretend this is the arm. Now you've got the back side that'll have data card here. So it'll actually have two data cards that are usable while in the middle of the match. You can take it off, put it on the next rifle. So that's coming. That's in the works that's being machined as we speak. 
uh, along with quite a, quite a few other things. Uh, we're also doing some uh, belts, uh, very similar to where you're using the, uh, the Austria Alpine, the Cobra buckles. Uh, I don't like really, how about a mount for a cell phone, too heavy? No, a mount for a cell, oh yeah, on the rifle. Uh, I haven't thought about that um, because I, I don't like cell phones attached to my rifle because they typically are going to overheat, especially if you live where Eagle Eye lives and it's the middle of summer, it yeah, being yeah, out in about overheat. 10 minutes. We've done enough videoing with iPhones with our channel that if you let it bake out in the sun for a few minutes, it's going to go into temperature shutdown mode. Now you have no access to any of that data. That's in North Carolina. Yeah, that's even in North Carolina. So I'm not a huge fan of doing that. I'm not saying I won't do it, but I'm just saying I need to look into it a little more. I, I need to proof that concept out before I just do it. We're also going to do some cell phone holders for this. Yeah, guys, 130 of you guys watching. I really appreciate it. Smart mount, smart mount, uh, watch mount linked to the phone. That's a small screen, though. Yeah. I don't know. There was a good, there was a question about... Um, We're going to try to answer your questions now because I've shown you as much as I really can show you at this point. Uh, but I just wanted to get your thoughts on it. Anything, and I do appreciate the feedbacks. Even if, even even the ones that I, I might say, yeah, maybe not, I, I like to hear it. 2A Refugee says, how is the Tagus attached to the nylon slash Condura? It is actually sewn into it directly as well as adhered. You didn't tell them about the... Uh, what? The Kestrel protector. Yeah, so on the actual final model of the Kestrel pouch... It actually has the, uh, the Tegris on the front, bottom, and back side. So you have impact protection on the front and rear of your Kestrel because, you know, now these Kestrels, depending on which one you get, you're going to play close to $700. And just putting this in a standard mount, I still have the risk of hitting this hard and cracking the screen. So, yeah, that's what I'm doing is trying to protect everything and do it right. Uh, these pouches are probably going to be in the $25 to $30 range. Uh, but there's more to it than just that. It does have Velcro on the back, but it does come with a panel that's going to have a molly so that you can thread it through. All right, Sam Miguel, appreciate it. Am I going to have the accessories available at the have time of release? The bag will be released initially with the eight bullet holder runners. I'm hoping to have, I will have all of these available. Hopefully these. I don't know if the rim, uh, rim fire pouches will be available. The Kestrel pouch will be available. Um, and I'm still trying to get a time frame on that. Well, shipping to Canada or other available in the U.S.? Only available in the U.S. Okay, so those that know me, I actually helped someone out the other day. He wanted a product uh, that the manufacturer does not ship to France. And I told him, I was like... You know, he contacted me. He goes, would you ship this to France for me? I said, look, if you pay me, I said, I'll do it. I have no problems. You just got to be understanding. Because I know, Rick, you shipped something to uh, Iceland. Iceland. And it took... It took months. It took like two months? A month, probably a month and a half. And I don't know why that happened, but as long as they're realistic about it, they don't mind, and that it's on the shipping, if it gets caught in customs, uh, I don't have a problem shipping stuff overseas. Sabotage x87 says is there a priority list for the product and that's what i was trying to no no i am not prioritizing i'm not putting any type of uh payment on this until i have the initial 60 in hand and when that happens the website will go live i'll let you guys know i'll do a live uh broadcast on it and then once that goes because i'm going to have other products on there i'm hoping because I'm, I'm looking to develop a line of shooting bags as well uh, actual shooting bags, you know, whether it's pump pillows or whatnot. So, but you'll be able to give these guys a heads up before everybody else. Yes. Anybody that watches the channel is going to see it before anyone I'll else. I'll make sure you guys know about it. Are you branding with any logos? Yes. It's going to be the X-Ring Customs logo, which is actually on my phone. It looks very similar to my X-Ring logo that I use on YouTube, uh, but it will be, I'm going to show you guys this up close. It will be that logo right there. It says X-Ring Customs. It's very simple. I just wanted to keep it simple. I didn't want to get too graphic with it. And as soon as 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 soon as they're being made is when we're going to start selling them. Uh, like I said, a uh, long rifle case. I've already worked on that, Ramsey. We've already got that being drawn up. That will not be ready by Christmas, uh, but I've already got Next the long Christmas. rifle case. <laughs> we have waterproof zippers, and it will utilize this 
patented QD system. So, so Outlaw Josie Wales says, hi guys, Ray, is the final cost of the standard model still under the projected 200? Yes, it's gonna be $200 uh, for this one right here. And that's, that's honestly hurting us, but it will be for this model without the two additional buckles. The two additional buckles is gonna bring it around 220-ish. Can Tegris be bent, pressed into curved shapes? Okay, so Tegris can be heated. It is not Kydex, okay? So you can take this and you can bend it and it's gonna go back to its shape. If I take some heat, you can use something like Kydex. Uh, think about Kydex and use like a heat gun. You can bend it and it will retain that, okay? Uh, but this is not Kydex. You need to understand you have four and eight layer. This is extremely thin, but it's very rigid. Uh, they use this on a lot of products already in the military. Well, Richard Stevens, I hope so, because at this point, I'm so deep in the hole, we're going to keep going on with it. <laughs> and uh, uh, like I said, it, it took a lot to do this. It's not something that's easy to get into. If, if it was something that I wanted to contract somebody overseas to do it, I'm sure I could do it for less. And the quality would be American okay. Made. But this is all American made by U.S. workers here in Western North Carolina. Every single thing other than the copper buckle. I know you guys don't have the ability to see it up close, but I can tell you, I critique stuff really well. Especially he's almost too anal about it, but I, I go through and I look at all the stitching. So he wants to know my personal opinion on stuff. So I'm an asshole. So I'm going to give him my personal opinion. All right. And uh, I can say that this thing is very well made, very well thought out and uh, designed very nice. So. Well, I wanted to share that with you guys. I really did. Um, just to show you how, because how, a lot of you guys follow the channel and you've seen how this thing has progressed. Uh, some people have already approached me about doing some larger orders for to hold other items other than bullets. Um, because this is something that if you have a laptop, even Rick, you had, what was it, a 14-inch laptop? Yeah, the... Uh... No, 13. 13. The so, iMac, yeah, the I mean, the thing is, is this can be configured for a lot of different things. It's not just for bullets. Uh, when we I go that route, there. <laughs> maybe we'll do. You can put <laughs> just about dang near anything. Guys, this there. thing expands like crazy thick, um, even without the elastic. Uh, you just well, you'd here, have just, to see it. Just alone, this guy right here, plus everything else. Yeah, plus all the bullets and everything, and it'll hold a ton of weight. So, lunch. I don't think you can put lunch in there unless it's the thick, uh, thin no. sandwich. You a fajita. Put... You can no, do a no, fajita. No, a quesadilla. A quesadilla. Okay. A quesadilla. He almost thought it was a tablet case. Yeah, Diet Coke and tea. And, and that's it. But what you have to think about is it's not just a case. It is a modular system. And based on what panels we put in it can accommodate your needs. Well, and you told these guys about, I'm not a big man Percy kind of dude, but if you are running... You can put your rifle sling on this. You and can, because the buckles are set up. You just pinch it and rip. And, then and you, can, you can hold a full-size Glock 21 in there. Yep. Uh, use it on a Velcro, like a Kydex-style holster. And you can put four mags in there without any issues. So Yeah, there's plenty of room for pistol in mags. So, on to other things. Let's change the gears. You better hurry up. You only got 20 minutes. And then you have to go live. And then I got my live broadcast. Does the factory you're using have capacity to keep up with demand? These will move quick. Brian, Duchesne, we've already had that conversation with them because if the first 60 sell out in two days or five days, they said they will dedicate a line to us specifically. They do have enough workers. They have done some very, very large contracts with the military, everything from vest to um, a lot of safety restraint systems. So it just, like I said, it was divine intervention that this place was literally 15 minutes from my house. Um, that's kind of bad for them because I'm always dropping in going, hey, where are we at on this? Where are we at on this? Uh, but I, I want it to be right for everyone. I, I don't want to, to be honest, I don't want to put out a half-assed product. It needs to be high quality, something that I would be proud of, and this I am proud of. Julius Smith wants to know, uh, where to go? How did you set up yours for the, this most recent match? Okay, so for the most recent match, as soon as I opened it up, what I had was I had my whiteboard because the very first thing we did on this, it was on blind stages, I would stick it right to the tripod. And then now I had a full data board where I could put yardages once I ranged them because I had the tripod here. And once I was ranging them, I could come up with the distance, location, as well as 
the mills or the holds. If I had time beforehand and they gave us target distances yeah. and azimuth on it, target what I could shapes. do is, matter of fact, why not just show you? The Maybe. last match was a lot of azimuth stuff. So these are actual data cards from the match. So I've got all my notes on there and everything else. So if I needed it, I could go ahead and I'm, I'm working off of the bag here. So I'm getting all my calculations. Boom, I stick it onto the data card holder and I've got it there for me. Official chicken wants to know bulletproof backpacks. Am I selling the pens also? No, you can get these pens from any, you, you know, wet, box brand store. What you erase. want is you want wet erase. Expo makes a good quality one. Don't go cheap. Not dry you know, erase. I, I thought about just having them so that I could sell them on the site. That way somebody doesn't have to worry about going out to the store. Maybe I'll do that. But these, these are not the cheapest things in the world. They are cheaper than the Statlers, which are not a wet erase. It is actually a alcohol only erase. Well, it's a permanent marker, isn't it? Yeah, but it doesn't stain it. Give me just a minute. That's right, Orion Fixer. As long as you're good at it, buddy. Buy Expo wet erase and There you go. Yeah, you can. You'll see they're not the most inexpensive things. Where'd all my pens go? I'm, oh, I'll put them over here. Let me grab this. What's nice too is this pocket here, because you can see, can't really see all the shells, but the pockets, you can have the mags preloaded as well. So guys, these are Stettler Lumicolors. These are made in Germany. These are very expensive. It's called permanent, it shows permanent on there. This is a great, great pen, because it's a very fine tip. Those are made for the rainproof. But they're they're really made to no they're really made for data cards. But the thing is, it won't stain when you wipe it off with alcohol. Because what, what did somebody so just say? Says so you probably covered this, but I just got done flying and saw you were live. Oh, I appreciate it, Matthew. Uh, we're gonna have them available before Christmas. That's what I'm being told. I'll have all sixty before Christmas. Uh, when I do go live with it, it'll be on my website, which will be xringcustoms.com. Okay, so. Let's see, I got, yeah, I got those back when I was stationed there. I don't know what he was talking about. Maybe the Luma Colors. All right, so let's talk, let's move on just a little bit, just real quick. So this weekend, we are shooting a rimfire match. This is not something I thought I would ever get into. <laughs> and I shot a match um, put on by Chris Simmons. If you guys don't know who Chris Simmons is, I think right now he is presently ranked number one in the United States. Um, in NRL 22X, okay? He is an unbelievable rimfire shooter as well as a PRS long range shooter. He's sponsored by Voodoo along with US Optics and a lot of other companies. But he had put on a rimfire match in Old Fort, North Carolina. And I shot it and came in third place using what everybody was calling the little cricket, okay? It was actually my daughter's rifle. It was a CZ 455. <laughs> And I put it in a little MDT chassis that's about that long. And I had an unbelievable blast with it. So, the, this Thursday, I actually have a Voodoo V22 hitting my doorstep. Along with a bunch of Lapua, Center X, and some Ely. So, I wouldn't think it would be submersible. Actually... The Tegris, if this is in regards to this... And they're asking the if it's water resistant. It is water resistant, but the Tegris is actually mildew resistant, so it's not going to rot inside of here. So yeah, it is going to get water in it. It's not completely sealed, but it will be water resistant to rain for a little bit. Uh, but no rain cover for this, because if it gets to that, you probably need to throw it in your bag anyway, because you're probably not going to be able to use your pens riding on a wet board in the first place. The official chicken wants to know how much. Uh, what's that? He wants to know the price they just got. The price point for the data, the bullet data management folder with eight bullet runners is going to be two hundred dollars. Maybe it'll be one ninety nine ninety nine. <laughs> so uh, it'll be two hundred dollars, and that's with two of the QDs, and then uh, a two twenty ish for four of the QDs. And I appreciate him reading this off. So anyway, so we are we are going to be getting one of the Voodoo's with a Bartland MTU barrel, 18 inch, with the half 28. I'll be running a Thunder Beast can. Yeah. Uh, official chicken, just 
Keep watching the channel. Why did you get a voodoo so quick? Where did you get a voodoo so quick, Brian? Um, Top secret. It's uh, called in a lot of favors. How's that? Um, yeah, and so NRL 22. Yeah, I was supposed to get two because he wanted one, but uh, that wasn't going to be possible. Um, so I'm really looking forward to it. I'll actually have the rifle coming in Thursday afternoon. That pretty much gives me one day to try to get data all the way out to about 400 yards because that's about what you're going to shoot in an NRL 22 match. And you have to hope, start all over. I have to start all <laughs> over again. Uh, I will be shooting a That's Burris XTR-3 for the match. I do have a lot of options between Razors and Night Forces and whatnot, but uh, I do want to try the Burris XTR-3 for this match. I think it'll it'll do plenty plenty good enough. Rick is, because he couldn't get one, Josie I think. Wales says, Rick, I remember you saying I'm not ready to sink funds into that voodoo cost. Yeah, I said that too. I'm ready now. Yeah, he's ready now. I really want what is the most fun you remember shooting? It probably goes back to your childhood of shooting a twenty two. Probably a twenty two, yeah. And, and you can sit there and shoot all day long, have a great time, especially suppressed, and there's really nothing better. So why not why not go for it? Sell the car. So other Tim Buddha. Davis, I might actually put a night force ATAC R7 to 35, but chances are I'm gonna run that Burris XTR3. Uh, I owe it to those guys to do that and I wanna shoot it. I actually shot the match last time when yeah. I got third place shooting the XTR3. He was talking about you. He said I meant Ray. What was he talking about? That you would never go for that. Yeah, I know. That was me. I, I said I would never do it until I shot it. And guys, um, shooting 22 rimfire at 200 yards with a 22 long rifle is the equivalent of shooting a 6.5 Creedmoor at 1,000 yards. Okay? Um, that is what you're looking at. Ramsey Country, no primary armors on the 22 because I'm not running that rifle. Someone else is actually going to be running that rifle. Uh, we've got Matt Pierce is going to be shooting. John Kreiderman's going to be shooting. Rick's going to be shooting. Uh, actually, the match sold out. There's a lot of big sponsors on board with this match. Yep. Uh, big shout out to those guys for putting this match on because we've got sponsors like Vortex, US Optics, BNT, AccuShot, I think it is, and then you've got Voodoo, Coltac, Coltac and there was a there was one other company that came in today. There was an optic company, Vortex. Yeah, U.S. Optics and Optics uh, and um, was it Vortex? U.S. Optics. So yeah, it's going to be a pretty good one. Okay, got questions. Thoughts on the Remington Nylon sixty six, Abigail? I actually own one of those. It was one of my first twenty twos. If you guys know what she's talking about, it's basically the the whole polymer seventies <laughs> age Tim little diamond on the uh, on the uh, on the chassis. I still have one. Tim, are you shooting that match? He says, "Leave me a prize." Yeah, there's actually someone on the channel that's supposed to be signed up and shooting. There was that someone match. on my last chat. Yeah, I saw that. There. I saw that. So maybe we'll see you out there. And if you see us, what's up, Tim? Make sure you come up and say hey. And that's what I told him. Yeah, you have to do that. You got to come say hi. What's up, Thomas Rowland? I know Tim okay, Lau, got, who's watching, is going to be there. We got a couple questions here. Okay. Is that the Burris you won? No, that's a different one. That is not the ones that I won were the Burris XTR twos. The XTR3 is made in Colorado, okay? It is... This is driving me nuts. What, that? He doesn't like the backdrop moving. But yeah, that one's made in Colorado, and I think it's Greenlee, Colorado. The tracking's superb on it. I like the turret knobs. I like the feel of it, and I like the reticle. So I'm, I think I'm going to run that this weekend. Okay, and then can you give the site again? It's not up and running right now. Yeah, I don't have the site live. I still have to upload the pictures. That's, that's for Brandon. Uh, for the e-commerce and everything else, but it's going to be xringcustoms.com. We already have the domain. xringcustoms.com. Luke says, I own one. Sounds like, uh, what up, Thomas? Uh, shiny aluminum. So let's talk about cleaning. All right, let's talk about 22 and cleaning. Oh. Uh, I want you guys to answer up. How many of you guys, if you had a precision 22, think you should clean it or how often should you clean it? If you feel like Rick, I'm OCD. The, Please get some X-ring mousse for it. No, this isn't mousse. This is actually just my normal white hair, gray hair. There's nothing in this. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get your hair cut today? Yes. That's clean, so yes. Not terribly often, I wouldn't think. Um, <clears throat> let's see. I thought the only thing they had in... Nope, that ain't it. Oh, congratulations, G User A, for picking up a Tika T1X. Awesome. 
Yes, there is, Kelvin. I think it's uh, X-Ring Custom. Uh, there's a lot of companies called X-Ring. Old so. clean extractors oh, when it stops working. I wouldn't. Uh, there was something about uh, when it's dirty. Oh, Chris Malden, what's up? Guys, I grew up with that guy right there. We called him, we called him Puff Daddy. That he was his nickname. He says when it's dirty, duh. When it's dirty, duh. Okay, so guys, this is coming from uh, one of the best of the best in the business, and that would not be me, but this would be somebody with a lot of national championships. Uh, this conversation came up because I was new to the world of rimfire, and I didn't know what the cleaning regimen was like compared to hey, so. a, um, a centerfire rifle. So here we go. You don't have to worry about copper equilibrium like he's talking about. We're talking about precision rimfire guns. You're talking about your CZ 455s, your 457s, uh, your Anschutz, things like that. What I was told, and I'm just going to share with you what information came, in, came to me, was their rifle is cleaned every two to 300 rounds, regardless of whether it needs it or not. Okay, Bergara B14, that is a great rifle, but... You need to follow the cleaning regimen, okay? This is it. Whether it needs it or not, it is cleaned every two to 300 rounds, period, without fail. And this is somebody with a lot of national and international championships. So they must be doing something right. They're doing something right. What you want to do is use a bore guide. You're probably going to have to buy a special bore guide for your 22. Because what you don't want to do is just be poking around on the face of that chamber and just <laughs> putting dings on it and everything else. Only a nylon brush, okay? Do not use a bronze brush. This is what I was told, so I'm just sharing this with you guys. What you want to do is you don't have to use a solvent like hops number nine, okay? Because that actually has a copper uh, breakdown element in it. You might not have copper in it if you're just shooting lead like Ely 10X or Lapua Center X. Use hobbies? You can, but you don't have to. It's better just to use a light solvent, something like a CLP. Uh, something from Lucas or someone like that. What you're going to do is you're going to push your bore through there with a wet bar. You prep, push your or your nylon brush through the bore. And I was told it didn't even matter the direction. You can unscrew it if you like and you can pull it back. But once you exit the muzzle, you can pull it back in. You're not really going to damage your, your crown too much. You may want to make sure you clean your crown. But that nylon bristle brush is not going to do much to it. You want to... Never. Do that. If you're going to store it for a while, you can use a bore conditioner so that it doesn't rust. Okay. Bortec Rimfire Blend was actually a name that was actually mentioned to me to use in that. He's a, so spot on on that. Um, that was actually what I was told was the solvent that was used. Or you could use like Lucas CLP. Um, I don't want to get brand specific. Just use something that you know is good high quality. And then what you're going to do is just uh, use your dry patch, clean out the bore, and then scrub the face of your chamber with a nylon brush as well. You really don't need to be getting in, through, in there with any um, brass brushes or phosphor bronze brushes. Now, this is the key thing. Your accuracy will not come back for at least 15 to 30 rounds, okay? A lot of 22, especially like your Ely and some of these other higher-end ones, I mean, guys, you're talking about ammunition that can cost $20 for a box of 50 rounds, okay? It has beeswax or some other type of lubricant on the outside of the lead there. You've got to give it a chance. So no, no copper equilibrium, but let's just call it lubrication wax. equilibrium. Yeah, and it will take a little while before it comes back in. Said so something about polish. How would, poli how would a polished barrel handle prolonged shots? Could it go further between cleanings? Uh, it probably could, but because this guy is so well known and and what he does with his guns, it was like his championships. It was like you know what? If it's not broke, don't fix it. If it works for this guy, um, you know I'm not that guy. Why don't I go ahead and follow what he's doing? You know, if an Olympic shooter, let's say an Olympic medalist, come up to you and said, "Well, this is what I do and what I'd recommend," I'm not going to be the guy that says, "I don't think he knows what he's talking about." This guy yeah. knows what he's talking about. And he's so, just proved it time and time Yeah, again. so because I had grown up hearing you don't need to clean your 22s. It's not necessary, and that's not the case. Um, so hearing it from him, I'm, I'm hearing a lot of people say that, that somewhere between two to 300 rounds of rimfire, it's probably a good idea to go ahead and clean it out. 
So you're going live in five minutes. I'm going live in five minutes. All right. Well, guys, I want to thank each and every one of you that joined. If you can, give me a thumbs up. We'll get 92 on there. Yeah. Why are subsonic 22 rounds more popular when you shoot out to three to 400 yards? Isn't something further something? something. Okay. Let's think about this. When is your bullet going to be the most unstable? I'm not ready to quit just yet. I want to answer this question. Well, we're going to talk about a lot of this anyway. Let's say you're supersonic, right? Supersonic. And you start to go transonic into subsonic. When that bullet starts to go from above the speed of sound, breaking into the transonic subsonic range is when it's going to be the most unstable. If you keep it below supersonic from start to finish, you're going to have a lot more consistency. This is, Rick, go to commercial. So what you're going to notice when you start shooting supersonic rounds, you say, well, I'm going to shoot some stingers. You will do horribly with it. I think the, yeah. the, the charge and the way it's set up, you just have a ton of vertical dispersion. We tried it. Uh, we tried stingers. We tried hypervelocity. And we were told, do not do that. You're going you're gonna to have a huge issue with accuracy. And, and sure enough, they're right. Uh, you definitely want to shoot subsonic. Uh, you want to shoot some decent ammo, some good ammo that comes to mind. Ely, and every batch is going to be different. Every lot number is going to be different. Ely is a good one. Lapua, like your center X's. Um, They're expensive. Everything's going to, yeah, we're going from most expensive is going to be your Ely 10X, going down to your Lapua, like your center X, and then a lot of SK. It's hard to find SK right now, but SK makes some really, really good ammo, which I've been told is the equivalent of what the old Wolf uh, match target was if you've ever had a chance to shoot that um, it can do very very well for you it's not an inexpensive game it costs a lot <laughs> yeah you know extra uh, yeah i know i don't have the super chat on and i do appreciate you, you checking into it um I, i'm really here for you guys and sharing information um i really appreciate each and every one of you that's why i've never done um th this is why i've never done patreon i hate to say it um i I, I try to give back as much as I can to the shooting community, and I appreciate those that do want to help out. But um, hopefully I can help out the community by bringing these bags to you guys. So with that being said, thanks to each and every one of you. I'll keep you updated on the bags when they go live. I won't show any more of the bag. That's it. I'm done with the bag. Um, but when everything goes live, I'll let you guys know. And thank you for watching the channel, and uh, thank you for helping it grow. So if you're bored and want to keep talking about He's stuff, going to go over to Is Your Six Covered. We do a lot of live chats over there. Sometimes there's a lot of great information that gets uh, and a lot of fun as well. So when are you going off? I'm gonna go hit the bathroom, make some tea, and ready okay. To go. So in about ten minutes or so, I will minutes. stick around, guys, and I'll try to help if I can. I do have a Razor HD Gen 3 that I've had for about two and a half months. I've shot in a couple matches. We'll look at that on the match. We'll see you soon.